I wish to make it complete. <laughs> Sorry, we're closing for lunch. Never mind that, my lad. I wish to complain about this parrot what I purchased not half an hour ago from this very boutique. Oh, yes, the Norwegian blue. What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's dead. That's what's wrong with it. <laughs> okay, uh, so um, wh- where we left off, I'm recording now. We're now in the parrot room in the Patreon only part of the podcast. And. Um, we were going to uh, continue to explore wage slavery and the anti-work moment and the kind of the uh, the way in which the bourgeois rights and, and the, the 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 position of labor under capitalism um, can be taken up and transformed. You know that 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 has to be our starting point. I think is is one of the things that you're getting at. Um, but we also wanted to talk about Sublation Magazine, which is something we didn't we mentioned but didn't really. Right. emphasize tomorrow we're gonna have a six hour stream i'm not sure what kind of drugs i'm gonna take uh before it starts i might try uh you know certainly it will be coffee but i don't know what else uh, will get me through nothing illegal but uh something probably um but uh you got yeah, a good you got a doctor who gives you the good the good prescriptions i um Actually, you don't have to go illegal nowadays. No, you don't. I actually don't. I think that uh, what I can do is maybe get a hold of some Benadryl or something like that. But I, does that put you to sleep? I, 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 um, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, tomorrow's a big day. Six hours, and then maybe an extra hour for the for the patrons. Or good God, yeah. Because you know. I can't shut up. I need to talk for six hours. I need a six hour platform if I'm really going to get my message out. And that's why we're doing it. Um, no, there'll be lots of guests on tomorrow um, as well. So right, hopefully good conversations. Um, but back to Sublation Magazine. and Because uh, uh, Sublation Magazine is the whole occasion. We're going right. live tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That is right. Mm-hmm. So why? Um, what, what, what is it that you think sublation magazine can bring um and why is this article in compact or the existence of compact right now that's the the way the compact has arrived on the scene just before we have significant to you okay um i think i was beginning to suggest it you know perhaps churlishly and i don't mean to come off that way and i'm not hostile to anyone certainly not on the left Mm -hmm. uh and and i don't write anyone off or anything off i'd be no one would be happier than me to be proved wrong about for instance um you know the dsa's strategy for rebooting socialism in the united states um if I thought that that was really happening and that my poor efforts could contribute to that, um, you know, I would join them. You know, I don't, I don't take any pleasure in, 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 I'm not spiteful or anything like that. The criticism is meant politically. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the point that I wanted to make is that when I compared, um, this right wing, uh, columnist and founding editor of Compact Magazine, Sorab uh, Ahmadi, his, I compared him to like a vulture with a corpse, mm-hmm. is I was trying to say that um, there's a transition moment and that Jacobin, um, you know, in my estimation, as you know, in, in, in signing on to be the editor of a new journal on the left, I feel like there is nothing to express the project of historical socialism in publishing today. They, there are, pro, there are, publications that are tied to milieu that are interesting that come out of the boomer experience Mm -hmm. that may reproduce themselves, but they're living on fumes and memories. 
Hold yes. on, Spencer. My my website designer is just messaging me about needing verification. Um, so to get into to launch the site, we're launching the site right now. So let me just figure if I can. Okay, I just need to. Yeah, I have to do what you need to do. Yep. Throw the, right, so go, throw, go, the go. throw the um, throw the URL in the chat. It's what is it? Sublation Mag. Or yeah. Sub, what is it? Sub, it's um, I yeah. Just, I just the, need to memorize this now. It's um the sublation mag dot com is uh, going to be the uh, but it's not live yet. Aha. Um, uh -huh. And yeah. Okay. okay so shall so, I, yeah, I just doing... turned over my Google. Access, access to my Google accounts to this website designer in in the UK, so I may be mildly fucked because uh, it's, it's, it's now it, she has access to everything, to Google Pay, it just every you know Google owns me. I'm I'm an, I'm uh, anyway enough about that. <laughs> Having met her and knowing you, getting getting to know you better, I think you might be well advised to turn everything over to her. <laughs> okay okay that's probably a good idea yeah um <laughs> yeah. Pro probably your biggest problem is that you can't get someone like her to take this whole project on for you know this whole <laughs> right. man managing doug lane project on <laughs> yeah, um, that's right, right all right back to back to what you were saying about um yeah uh, uh, i don't like this line of, of of conversation let's go back to the other one um so, right. So what I, was, what I was saying is that is that Compact Magazine is, you know, it's coming out sensing a moment of, you know, arguably very belatedly. And I think that, um, you know, there have been, uh, you know, something, you know, we, we referred to the Tucker Carlson show, which is not just a show, but it's, it's a phenomenon of in the last few years of crossover right that mm -hmm. um you know and 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 it's telling that the crop that that crossover is only happening on the right um you know it, there could have been um you know that could have happened elsewhere but it, it really hasn't um in the mainstream media mm -hmm. and it, it it really became you know very pronounced I think in the last year or two that a lot of young Democrats you know watch that show, mm -hmm. and I think it's that's exactly the sense or that's the that's the um, weather vane that Compact Magazine is looking at, and they're saying you know there's some kind of audience for some sort of crossover between you know where, where people are willing to listen to chris smalls and willing to listen to you know admiration for you know the government of hungary the recently re-elected government of hungary in the mm -hmm. same magazine just mm -hmm. like they listen to that in the same show on television mm -hmm. um so I think broadly speaking, that's what it is. And they are, um, targeting Jacobin. I mean, the, the, the most basic rhetorical trick in that article is that it equates the left with the democratic party. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whether consciously or unconsciously, and I'm, you know, what do I know? Uh, you know, I'm sure that the man is a very intelligent conservative. Um, the, the author, Amari, he's in effect saying, haven't you become just Democrats? Mm -hmm. Right. Is there really anything other to the left than Democrats? And of course, you know, there is a lot of um, anxiety about that, I'm sure, amongst the 
Jacobin editorial staff and stable of writers, just as there is in the wider DSA. And of course, uh, Mutatis Mutandi in the wider left internationally after the neo-social democratic turn of the 2010s that we could associate with Sordiza, with Podemos, with the Corbyn movement in the UK. Um, we're talking about Jacobin and therefore we're talking in a primarily American voice here. But of course, even that is an international project. Bhaskar Sankara uh, also runs the, the, the old and venerable left labor organ, the you know, Tribune magazine mm -hmm. uh, in the UK. So there's this mo there, there's a sort of advanced moment of ideological crisis in the wake of Trump and Sanders mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I don't think it has that much. And I agree with uh, Ben Burgess, who sort of started this exchange in an article in Jacobin magazine about Compact, mm -hmm. where he said, you know, I don't really think there's a, there's a real future for a kind of anti-woke workerism. Mm -hmm. I think he's right about that politically. There may be enough of, you know, to sustain a kind of niche, uh, you know, there may be a sufficiently large niche uh, to sustain a, a, a publication project for some years. Um, mm -hmm. We yeah, I mean, there's are, like there's a place for like uh, uh, you know like you can sustain a magazine about t toy trains forever. So you why not uh, something like this, right? Right, you know, a little micro right. niche sort of project, right? Right, and these are thinking people who are going to uh, you know doubtless adapt uh, and and mm -hmm. ch change with the times. So who knows? You know, it may be here for decades. Mm -hmm. um, all that I'm trying to say is that we too sense not only the, I think, what Bhaskar Sankara recognized, mm -hmm. which is that the old boomer projects are exhausted. You know, we not only recognize, you know, that um, monthly review and new left review and the other few publications that are still standing uh, from the 20th century on the left, most of them from the second half of the 20th century, uh, are largely exhausted, in part because of the way that they're tethered to that past that doesn't seem quite usable, uh, or at least readily so. Um, now, Bhaskar shared that understanding, that recognition. And indeed, the DSA served as, you know, it took a lot of the left into receivership. Um, the, the old landscape of the left that you and I were familiar with uh, from the 1980s, 90s, 2000s, zeros has almost entirely vanished, largely because of the Sanders and Corbyn movements, which were really upheavals on the left as far as like what that looks like. Right. So just to take the, you know, the obvious example, um, the International Socialist Organization in the United States is, you know, basically part of Jacobin DSA now. Um, you know, if I had an image of the left, what I meant by a leftist in my own mind in say 2000, it was a member of the ISO. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is, you know, significant for those of us who try to understand the world through these changes on the left. And yet that project of the, you know, the of Jacobin, which is so tied to the millennial left, which is so significant for the continuity, discontinuity of the left in the long array sense is actually running into the sands within a decade or a dozen years, mm -hmm. right? To the extent that it claimed to inherit socialism, to the extent that it claimed to inherit the legacy, which after all, some of those sectarian organizations that were absorbed into it 
actually came from, mm -hmm. right? The left that we saw, however improbably, that we knew in our lifetimes had direct organizational ties that, let, that linked all the way back to the Communist Party of the United States, the Socialist Party of the United States, and via those organizations, even beyond into the 19th century. Right. right. Now, that legacy can't be adjudicated by Joe Biden. No, no. That leg, no. And that's where it's been led. And Sublation Magazine is here to say, we want to address the, you know, and now I am speaking internationally because unlike Jacobin, this project is internationalist in its conception. This is not an American leftist journal or a British leftist journal. It's, it is an Anglophone journal. And it, you know, I would gladly speak, you know, whatever, uh, Klingon, if, if, if we could speak Esperanto. that. Let's we do could Esperanto. speak, I, I would do it in Esperanto if, if there was an audience in Esperanto. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we want to speak to as many people as possible. We'll launch uh, sublation in French and in German and in Swahili uh, someday soon. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we are trying to address a global crisis of the legacy of socialism and Marxism. And there is going to be some, there are going to be young people who are coming out of the experience of the last 10 or 12 years or more going back into say the anti-war movement or even into the 1990s um, anti-globalization movement who are also going to want to answer, ask the question, is this what all of that really means, right? Is this movement, is, are these historical developments really the true heirs of the struggle for socialism as we inherit it from the 19th and 20th centuries. And if not, and if that legacy is still worth trying to understand or ad and potentially advance, there's an intellectual and ideological dimension to that because the crisis has an ideological or intellectual dimension. We have problems that we have to think through and we want to be an open forum for thinking through those problems. That's the justification for the launching of Sublation Magazine. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, we talked, you talked a little bit about the, the uh, promising beginning, I would say even of Jacobin and mm -hmm. the attempt by Jacobin to take up a, a cow skin um, Marxism. I mean, I was skeptical at the time, Doug. I'm trying to be very, very. Generous. Okay. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. All right. Well, then that. And if I were on, if I were completely honest, you know, I would say that you know, Bosker has surprised me in some respects. And 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 for the better or for the worse. Well, I think you know. I, I guess you could say that his his strengths are tied up with his weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I I do think that he was good at articulating a generational sensibility. Um, you know, I think he was actually quite self-conscious at that level of, you know, like I look to the sixties, I need the input of these older people. Um, and you know, he was quite self-conscious in saying, you know, generation X is just kind of pointless, which I, think is a great insight. I, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a great insight, Doug. It's a great insight. <laughs> right? We're just refugees, right? We cannot claim to speak for our, our generation. It's irredeemable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... Um, I, I refuse this line of... I mean, I know you're probably right, but, but, but I, I, you know... Sure. I am... Look, I am the guy... I've said this probably a number of times, but I've realized... Uh, again and again and again, I'd say it again and again and again, that in like the 1992, if I had met someone like me, he would have been dressed like John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. Like that, that's the, you know, and talking about how great it was back in the seventies, although right. at this point it would have been, 
he would have been dressed like um i don't know like a like a hippie from or like i don't know he'd been actually he probably would have had a crew cut and a and and look like someone from 1962 or something you know if i was going to really do the accurate timeline here that's who i am it's the guy who's still holding down to 1962 uh -huh. in 1992 or something like that you know um so I'm just pathetically out of touch, and the the the, the idea that uh, that Generation X is anything other than a failure is probably ridiculous. But it is my youth, you know, and uh, there were parts of it that it's a great time to be alive. Were, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's for damn sure. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for the generational experience uh, that these young people have at the level of being alive and young. Yeah, for but sure. I, I but I can't really defend the Gen X left. In any in any way, I mean, what there is is a clearer insight, I would say, um, than Boscar has. Mm -hmm. You know, I do think that you know we, and I've heard you articulate this as well. We have a clearer sense of sort of repetition on the left. Mm -hmm. Because we really felt the kind, you know, really a, a failed project of the new left's self reproduction through Generation X. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the problem is, is that, you know, that recognition or that experience was not particularly acute. You know, we don't, you know, I only find it in like very few people, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like you and I understand that in 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 some intuitive way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Chris has that. I, I think Richard has that. You know, people who have been involved with in Platypus, um, mm -hmm. you know, have that sense of like, yeah, Nicaragua and you know the Sandinistas or or, or whatever. Um, it's not going to work for us, like civil rights in Vietnam and whatever worked for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and most people just sort of became like hipsters or something, you know, mm -hmm. in our generation. I mean, I think it's very bizarre, but let's not get, let's not get lost down that rabbit hole. No, 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 no. But the, my question is how can we, in this moment, also the, the difference between sublation and uh, Jacobin or compact probably too, is that, we are intergenerational. We're not um, being founded by we're not being founded by Zoomers trying to represent their generation. We're being founded by millennials and Gen Xers and even a, a, some boomers, um, at least one boomer, I think. Uh, who uh, we're open to the participation of Zoomers. Oh, we absolutely are. Yeah, um, uh, it's not like we're saying, "Oh, Zoomers get out" by any means, but it's right. just like we're not. We're just waiting we're for not, them to grow up to the point where they can do it, right? I mean, yeah, they're, right, just, right. they're still quite. No, uh, I, they'll take absolutely. I, I wholly endorse what you're saying. We yeah. are. We embrace every live generation. Yeah, yeah, but I, I did, I did when I when I founded the company, I did email each one of my kids and promise them that they could be CEO one day. Um, just to, so it's a it's a reference to Secession, um, a TV show. But uh, the point is that we need to avoid this mistake too. And I don't know if we're as well positioned to have the strengths that, that, that Jacobin had say, for instance, because we don't have a clear insight into the coming left. This right. coming left, by the way, could very easily just be a repeat of Gen X. It's a small cohort. This is a, uh, that's absolutely right. And you put your, uh, you put your finger on it, hmm. which is, and I, I was trying to ex gesture towards this, but hmm. uh, we are in a period of disorientation and depoliticization. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that is the crisis for Jacobin. You know, no one's going to feel it more acutely than the DSA kids, right? Mm -hmm. it, it really wasn't so long ago that, you know, they were talking about tens of thousands of new members after the, Bernie campaign at the beginning, you know, circuit, mm -hmm. circuit January. No, it was, it was yesterday, really. I yeah, mean, January 2017, right? You mm -hmm. know, the, around the time of Trump's inauguration, uh, mm -hmm. they were riding high. And, and you know, there's going to be a few people who come out of that. 
that, you know, Bosco, I guess, now that he's the president of the magazine of the Nation Institute, uh, you know, he might carry them with him there, uh, etc. Uh, there may be some people who become like lifelong activists. There'll be these people who do rank and fileism and maybe become, you know, active in the labor movement for life. But there's going to be a lot of cynicism and depoliticization, a lot. Mm -hmm. And we can't stem that and don't aspire to stem it. Um, but we do want to intersect those who are asking themselves, what did I just experience? And what was that tune that I heard snatches of, you know, was that, you know, the Marseillaise, was that the international, right? People got an inkling, you know, they, they felt the presence of the past um, mm -hmm. in some ways, enough to, you know, to, to be depoliticized or made cynical, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because they're, they're at some level disappointed. Um, and we want them to raise to higher consciousness what it is that we're disappointed by. And in that sense, we want to hold on to the horizons that are coming, you know, the, 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 the political horizons of the greatest seriousness and the most ambitious project of all the people contributing to us. In other words, that's why we want to be intergenerational, mm -hmm. right? We want to be intergenerational because we want to, 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 in a sense, work through, you know, the confusions and the problems around those, you know, achieving those political horizons and ambitions. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, that's what I, you know, I, I do think it's going to be tricky. Uh, I want to emphasize that we are going to, that we're, that we're, we don't have the answers. Can I ask and, you a question about, that's about why well, we're, you know, open submission and we're open to debate. Mm -hmm. We don't have a line, you know, we have a historical sensibility at best. Yeah. When it, when we look at Compact, we can see it as a conservative magazine, right? It's clearly a conservative magazine, um, despite its workerism or its turn towards uh, uh, welfare, state, social democracy. Um, we are not, we are absolutely going to be and remain a left publication. There's no risk of us becoming a conservative publication, but there is a risk of us being perceived that way. Um, by some, and there's a risk of uh, um, there's a risk of being perceived as ultra left too, right? Oh, well, yeah, and that will probably flip back and forth between yep. those two. Um, and I, I of the two, I don't mind being perceived as being ultra left. I'm very comfortable in that position. Unfortunately, right? Uh, <laughs> as an old Gen Xer, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm ultra left, and I print, seems um, edgy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, so, but what I, what I'm getting at is how can we, um, navigate and, or, and sublate these categories, these, these categories and avoid, um, well, for one, accidentally becoming useful idiots for Republicans or Democrats, um, or, and two, um, being mis misrecognized, being misperceived, um. Because I, I find that it's a difficult uh, terrain to navigate this contemporary left. Um, the easiest people to talk to are probably Zoomers, but that's because they don't know anything. So you can just tell them what to think. But I mean, otherwise, um, you know, with millennials and Gen Xers and certainly boomers, it's a tricky terrain. So what what do you think we can do at the Sublution Magazine to to create a space where we can uh, you know, not be just parroting the Democratic Party and therefore be perceived as woke, but also not be 
anti woke either, not not being in opposition to to that. Well, obviously, I think that um, you know those terms are. Um, you know, we wanted we want to avoid those, and how do we avoid those? Um, you know, the the question of wokeness is entirely symptomatic, right? It's in in and we you know it, it, every everyone sees it it you know at its at its simplest level that that's what the Democrats can offer when they can't offer anything, right? right? Um, and so, you, know, you, you hear people all the, you know, you know, the people who they talk to that they hear, you know, they, they tell them that, you know, so Adolf Reed will say all the time, you know, well, you know, your anti-racism, you know, doesn't pay my fare onto the subway, right? It doesn't do me any good that you're so guilt ridden. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and so I think that yeah, there's a simple recognition that everyone has that it's, you know, and, and the trans issue would be a great example of, of an issue that just feels like it's posed in a way that's impossible to navigate, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's posed as, you know, do you want to have girls sports, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, do we really have to have like safe bathrooms, you know? And it's like, I want girls sports and I want safe bathrooms. You know, I, I want all of those things and I don't know, you know, right. how, why this can't be negotiated. Right. Right. Uh, it's just, well, a tra you know, they're just traps laid. And so we want right. to frame them as symptoms of a political defeat, right? Rather than than adjudicate them, right? Uh, well, I mean, you, you said it's, something. It's in one the, of the, the problems. Go ahead. Go ahead. You said said something in the first. It's okay. In the first half, about how um, woke uh, a woke approach um, covers up. Uh, you know, you just said it just a moment ago. How woke wokeism is what you're offered when they can't offer you anything. And for me, the um, the quintessential illustration of this would be. Uh, the the ending the, the the stigma on the term homeless that you've been you're, we're not allowed to call people homeless anymore they're unhoused right, right. everyone or should I, understand that Doug lives on the west coast <laughs> right I do because I guess in on the east coast you still call them homeless you but, still call um, them homeless yeah yeah um, but they're unhoused and the uh, the <laughs> The idea is that you don't want to rob people of their dignity by saying they don't have a home, that they don't have a place. But of course, you know, by saying what but they are. But that's not going to keep them warm or dry when well, they're sitting gonna, out and, and the wind is blowing and the rain is pouring down. The fact, yeah. is, you, the fact is, they're not going to have dignity just because right. we all call them unhoused instead of homeless. Right. That, that the, digni the indignity is the, their condition of being homeless, which. Sure. We should get, we need to end that condition. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like they need to be destigmatized. Right. They need to, that condition of being homeless needs to end. And um, uh, the right, on the other hand, will not call people unhoused. They'll call them homeless or meth heads or a variety of other things. And they seem more honest and more in touch. By saying, yeah, these people are sitting in the streets and taking drugs out in the open and having mental, you know, uh, events, mental illness events, and um, are, are making our neighborhoods unlivable, and are, this has to be stopped. Because that's right; it does have to be stopped. But the but then the problem yep. on the right is, what do they mean by it has to be stopped? Right. Does that mean that these people need to be cleared away and put somewhere else? I right. don't mean stopping the condition of homelessness, right? Um, yeah. Nobody means stopping the condition of homelessness, except maybe socialists and other utopians. Um, but but that's what we need to like. 
we have to understand well, places in the world where they don't have a homeless problem, anything like, you know, in the oh, United sure. States. Um, so, you know, surely something could be done, but, um, you know, I guess the larger issue is that there's an exhaustion of political imagination. Mm -hmm. So that the left, like the right, just thinks in terms of policies. Right. But right. my point was with the right. anti-woke and the woke languages, both of them cover up the need for an actual transcendence and change. They, but you can be anti-woke and seem better, but you're actually not necessarily going to be any oh, closer. Oh, of course. Right. I mean, I, absolutely. I mean, I would, yeah. I would certainly suggest that – um, you know, the Democrats are in many ways more racist than the Republicans. Absolutely. Uh, they, their anti-racism is very often racist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are anti-individual. They don't see people as individuals. They see them as members of races, and that's racism. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if that sounds right wing. It's just true. Mm -hmm. And it's just the, you know, in other words, we can't accept how naive and uneducated people who don't know anything about politics hear what we say. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to, they have to let us educate them or mm -hmm. they have to leave us alone. <laughs> right? right. Because, I'm not going to be called racist by these racists. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, right. it's like when they say, well, you know, we're all racists and, you know, you know, to which no. you say, well, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> right. Catholic yeah. Catholics will say the same thing. We're all sinners. Exactly. It is. Well, it is that way. Right. It is. Mm -hmm. It is quasi religious. Now, beyond that, there is the, 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 the spectral character of the present. Right, which is that we are reenacting a, a historical script from the past. Right, that wokeness is, you know, a repetition on a highly degraded level mm -hmm. of the left of the past. Which one? What? Which? Well, most obviously, and I think most saliently, the new left. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the failure of the new left is the most immediate way in which failure keeps replaying itself. Mm -hmm. Now, there, there are deeper failures that history is also bringing to bear, in as it were, unconscious ways. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we you know, young people are reenacting the past. Right. And they more or less say it, you know, they had a civil rights movement. We're going to have a civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. They had second wave feminism. We're going to have third wave feminism. They had a rank and file strategy. We're going to have a rank and file strategy. Mm -hmm. right? At some level, they're 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 conscious of it, uh, but they're not really conscious of how different the conditions are and how um, far, you know, truly farcical these replays are. Mm -hmm. um and so and, and that's why it you know has all sorts of horrifically illiberal uh, and distasteful aspects to it um so you know that said you know the anti-woke stuff just seems like it's i mean look the point is, is that if let's 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 the not even, let's not even like, talk about these right wing people. It's just too stup stupefying at some level. <laughs> let's yeah, talk right. about you know, if we're trying to organize socialism, mm -hmm. we are going to have to uh, do that with all kinds of people who have all kinds of beliefs that are secondary to their potential commitment to leftist politics, right? And we don't need to convince people 
we don't need to get we don't need to keep coming up with reasons why we're not engaged in a project of building solidarity to create socialist politics in the world well this person is too white or this person is too rural or his accent is too thick or he doesn't have the right attitude about this or that these things are all ancillary right to politics and we would be wanting to build a politics that included people who you know and this is the issue of working class politics and of class independent politics is that you know we to the extent that we're socialists believe that this society's form of freedom is in some fundamental way economic and that the form of unfreedom is therefore in some fundamental way economic and that forms of prejudice and racism and various forms of delusions that are essentially expressing the divisions within the working class are just that they're problems for working class solidarity we don't care about them beyond that beyond that they're just stupid shit right-wing people say mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. anti-semitism racism you know whatever catholic community right it's just stupid stuff that right-wing people say we don't care mm -hmm. right we only care about these divisions in as much as they represent an organizational yeah. obstacle mm -hmm. right and that's where you know the old working class understood these things would you right? say that the you that didn't the have right to, you didn't have to convince people not to be racist to understand that an attack by the boss or by his thugs on your fellow worker who was of a different race was an injury to one and thus an injury to all mm -hmm. right there were ways of getting at that there were ways that the labor movement had of talking about that with that were perfectly compatible with all sorts of other beliefs right right you know and but that, of would course, you say that the, were transformative the, in the long run of people's beliefs. Would you say that the existence of the right, whatever it might be, you know, whichever right you want to call the mm -hmm. right, is a symptom of the failure of the working class? It's all it is. Right? It's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's just the opportunism that manages the world in the absence of proletarian socialism being able to as it were rule right yes that's all that the right is one it, way to think about it's that why the right, right looks like you know, it's why the, the the right is the old left right like when people are invoking like, you know for instance compact magazine you mm -hmm. know they want to talk a lot about family mm -hmm. well they're going to be invoking you know and they want to talk about the working class so you could be sure they're going to start talking about, you know, single male head of household, you know, male head of householder living wages, right? We need jobs with wage levels so that mothers can stay home and raise children, just like the good book says they should. And really, they want to do that. And working people are conservative, et cetera, right? Now... That was a demand of the labor movement. Right. Right. It was a demand of like, look, your in Marxist time in Marxist time in the 19th century, down into the first decades of the 20th century, the experience of the working class was so degraded that they couldn't maintain their families. Right. That being able to have a family and have children and to experience that kind of intimacy, and that is the intimacy that's available to us in the absence of a reorganization of intimacy and in the biological reproduction of the species and nurturance and so forth and so on, mm -hmm. is the family form. And that family form is being undermined because mm -hmm. of crappy wage levels, crappy working conditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so the working class demanded, look, we want to be able to have a family. We want it, one person to be paid enough to raise a family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't just a privilege. It was also a duty and a bummer that that fell to the men. Now, it was also 
a privilege and a duty and a bummer that a different role fell to women. Mm -hmm. But working class men and women thought, well, that's a better deal. Mm -hmm. And they're just, the right's just going to resuscitate that. Right. Even even free market capitalism is just a resuscitation of the revolutionary bourgeoisie, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's you know, like people waving Adam Smith at you. Right, you know, <laughs> right. That's not right wing. Right. That's the project of the left from a long time ago. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah, and at right. some level is still the project of the left in ways that you know people who don't you know don't know how to read don't understand. Um, you know, in other words, we don't just supersede the past right? And, and its project, but that's, you know, so yeah, the right is just there to stabilize the status quo. Mm. It's kind of like at the end of the, the Soviet Union to blame the warlords and the oligarchs for the collapse of the Soviet Union would have been as just as misguided as to blame compact or. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the right wing forces in America today for the failure of the liberal consensus say um, that they are simply the people coming in uh, the vultures as you put it right. after the about after the that was my entire defense of of American neocolonialism in another video right 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 it's like they stabilize the status quo right right um, and we and all have an interest in that. Right, letting, That's right. Just, everyone has an interest in that, right? The left has to be able to lead beyond the status quo in a way that isn't just chaos, anarchy, and confusion. Right. Right. It has to be able to do that. And that's an immense organizing and political task. Mm hmm. Right. And to the, you know, that's why, you know, for left. And uh, most of us have given up on that. A long time ago, most of the left has given up on that. Certainly, like I remember, uh, um, did I, me have already told you a story. Because when it falls that? short, just to make it absolutely yeah. clear, when that leftist project falls short, it looks like violence and chaos. Right. Right. It is, an, you know, to the point now that in the minds of most people, revolutionary politics is a demand for violence and chaos. Right. 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 Well, like which it isn't. I, but one of the members of the band Crass was part of uh, of the reading group for my first book, which was a short story collection. And we and I held a a panel at the Blue Stockings to talk about the left because uh, because the book the short stories were all political. And, okay. And and uh I said at the time, I said, I think that we need to resuscitate the idea of an avant-garde, the resuscitate that in the arts there should be a leading movement because we need, because right now we can't just let any old thought dominate. We need to actually change society. And she said, are you ready to change society? Do you have the system in place that can, that can deliver goods as well as efficiently as capitalism? Are you smart enough? To, right. to get all these pieces put together. And I said, well, I don't, not right now, no. And she, she said, well, then maybe you should just allow anything in and just say if it's imaginative and free and open. And, you know, that will be the left, was basically what she told me. And uh, that was a, her telling me quite directly, we're not trying to replace the system that is. That's not what the left project is. That's not what punk rock is about uh, uh -huh. it's about it's about expressing our moral outrage against it and uh, right so i mean i should I'm, I'm probably making enemies of crass fans right now but <laughs> anyway but well i mean obviously you know it's a, it's very sad that people look to you know to actors and musicians to 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 get all of their opinions um, you <laughs> right. know, we, we should all be humble and, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I can't play better music than they do. Um, you know, but it, it just because you can write a song doesn't mean that, you know, 
you can necessarily she, think through politics. And maybe you can, maybe you can't, because people can't she do was a actually lot of things. The, she was a visual artist in the group. She made all their covers. She made the cover uh, of my my uh, short story collection. So she was not even a she didn't even uh, play, but she uh, she was an artist, visual artist, quite good one. G Voucher, um, and uh, a, a lovely lady, but you know, right. So it's a long term, you know, and and I'm not saying how long a term it is, uh, but it's a project of you know when I say that politics, you know, that we that we need to at least look at the history of socialism that emerged in, you know, that through civil society organizing, uh, you know, what it's about is about, you know, the self, you know, what, what self-organization of the working class means is that the working class is attempting to address its needs, attempting to address its condition as proletarian in and through its own efforts. Mm. And those include, you know, the building of of labor movements, uh, but they far transcend that and involve all sorts of other things. Like they would meet the social needs of the working class that was, you know, international immigrants, people freshly arrived from the countryside, from the farms, you know, and here's the bowling league or here's, you know, all sorts of things. Right. Uh, here are the publications to read. Here are the reading groups. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Give me five more minutes. Okay. All right. All right. My kid okay, finally, we, we got to get going because my kid just finally got out of bed at 143 in the afternoon he wants me to feed him um but uh okay so all i was saying is that you know that the, the way that you answer that question you know are you prepared right do you have an answer mm. right do, do you can you solve these problems mm. right is that you have to be able to point towards the building of of political forms by a working class that is pointing towards the possibility of like yeah these people they can take over society mm -hmm. and that's right and the, the, like and that's not about policies that's not about universal health care that's not about any of this crap that these kids talk about right mm -hmm. that's about saying like we have the ability look at these organizations look at the what workers have done for themselves mm -hmm. Right. They can run this society. They can run your state department. They can run your all of your fucked up institutions. Mm -hmm. We need to restaff them with workers. That's workers control. That's the dictatorship of the proletariat. That's mm -hmm. the solution that we're pointing towards. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you, you know, and so you have to actually build that up in a way, you know, with a clear class line in the sense you know and this is just make me sound like an old goddamn marxist right which you what which, you are which is what i am <laughs> which is what i am right which mm -hmm. is that i am you know that that the class line is political right the mm -hmm. class line is that we don't take responsibility for the way they run this society we are here to expose it right we call everything out we call out the way that they discriminate against trans people. We call out the way that they use the trans issue to try and cook up some false divisions. We're going to call out their wars. We're going to call out their attack on free speech. We're going to call out all of their illiberalism, the way they don't live up to their own ideals. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I think that's what... and I. I and, you know, because they can't be liberal under conditions of capitalism. Right. The, the bourgeoisie can no longer lead. Right. right? And the question and, and, is, and the, can and the working class why, lead? Yeah, and that's why the left isn't leading. Because it has not even begun, or lately it's, it's stopped trying to be independent of the bourgeois politics or the capitalist politics that lately like yeah <laughs> like the last fucking hundred years yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 
All Definitely. Right. I mean, certainly since, you know, the 1930s and the Communist Party, you know, you're basically blessing uh, the Democratic Party as the vehicle for the aspirations of socialism. I mean, we certainly haven't recovered from that. No. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let's cut it off right there. Cut it off right, there. Spencer. Okay. Yeah. Go-